concentration calculations. In this video, we're going to be going over 10 concentration calculations. Now, if you want to get the best out of this video, I would recommend pausing before I answer each question and have a go yourself. Then press play and we can go through the questions together. Question 1. Which of the following contains the most chloride ions? So the first thing we're going to do is write down the formula of what we have. So we have aluminium chloride, which is AlCl3, calcium chloride, hydrochloric acid, and sodium chloride. So if we want to know which one has the most chloride ions, what we can do is work out which one has the most moles of chloride ions. Now, aluminium chloride has three chloride ions per AlCl3. So keep that in mind. There's two for calcium chloride. HCl and NaCl have a one-to-one -one ratio with their chloride ions. Okay, so first of all, we're going to work out the moles of aluminium chloride. Then we'll times it by three to get the moles of chloride ions in this solution. For part B, we'll work out the moles of calcium chloride and then times it by two to get the moles of chloride ions. For hydrochloric acid, the moles of HCl and Cl- are the same. And also, the moles of NaCl and Cl- will also be the same, because they have a 1 to 1 ratio. So, starting with part A. Since we have volume and concentration, we can use the formula number of moles is equal to C times V over 1000. So, plugging in the numbers equals the following. Since we have volume and concentration, we're going to use the equation number of moles equals concentration times volume divided by 1000. And the reason we're dividing it by 1000 is because the volume is in centimeters cubed. So plugging in the numbers from the question gives us the following value. Then we times it by 3, and that gives us the following value for chloride ions. And we're going to do the same for the next three solutions. So we have the volume and concentration of calcium chloride, then we'll times our answer by 2, and that gives us the following moles for chloride ions. For hydrochloric acid, we'll use these values. But remember, here we just leave it as it is. We don't have to times it by 2 or by 3, because it's a 1 to 1 ratio. And for sodium chloride, we get the following. So we can see that this has the most chloride ions, so therefore the answer is B. Okay, so try this question. And the answer is B for this one as well. Now for some questions, I'm not going to go through the calculation because I want to keep the video quite short. But it's pretty much the same as a previous question. Okay, moving on to question 3. What is the concentration of chloride ions in this solution? So we have a 100 cm cube solution and we placed 1.08 grams of lead chloride in it. We know that lead chloride has two chloride ions in its formula. We want to work out the concentration of chloride ions in this solution. Remember, to work out concentration, we have to know moles and volume. We already know the volume, it's 100 centimeters cubed. However, we haven't been given the moles of chloride ions. So let's work out the moles of lead chloride first. We can use the equation mass over MR. The mass is 1.08, and using the periodic table, we got an MR of 278.2. That gives us the following moles. Now from this, we can work out the moles of chloride ions. But remember, it's a 1 to 2 ratio, so that means we're going to have to times it by 2 which gives us 7.76 times 10 to the power of minus 3 moles. Perfect, we have the moles and the volume of chloride ions. So we're going to use the equation moles equals concentration times volume over a thousand. Again, we're doing the over a thousand because the volume is in centimeters cubed. To rearrange that, concentration will be the following. And then all we have to do now is plug in the values. 
and that gives us a concentration of 7.76 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per dm cubed. So the answer is D. Have a go at this question. And the answer for this question is also D. Moving on to question 5. A solution has a volume of 500 centimeters cubed and contains 150 grams of ammonia. What is the concentration of this solution? Remember, to work out concentration, we have to work out moles divided by volume, in this case decimeters cubed. So, we have the mass, and we can work out the MR of ammonia using the periodic table. So if we do that, 150 over 17, that will give us the moles. However, what we're going to do is work out concentration. And for that, we have to do moles divided by volume, which is 500 centimeters cubed or 0.5 dm cubed. So putting all of this triple layered fraction into the calculator will give us the following value. So the answer is D. Okay, which sample of liquid has the greatest volume? We've been given mass and density and we need to work out volume. Now we know that density is mass over volume. However, we're going to rearrange the equation so that we get volume is equal to mass over density. Now notice in all the scenarios, the density has been given as grams per centimeters cubed, which means that we have to make sure that the mass that we use is also in grams. So starting with the first one, 500 milligrams is equal to 0.5 grams. All we have to do is divide it by 1000. So for part A, to work out volume, we're going to do mass, which is 0.5, divided by density, which is 0.63. And that gives us 0.79 centimeters cubed. For part B, again, it's in milligrams, so dividing by 1000 first, and then we can do mass over density, which gives us 0.81 centimeters cubed. For part C, it's already in grams, perfect, so all we have to do is 1.2 divided by 1.33, which is 0.9. And finally, for part D, 1.3 over 1.48, which equals 0.87. So in this question, C is the correct answer. Question 7. The MR of hydrated copper sulfate is 249.6. Which of the following is the mass of hydrated copper sulfate required to make 50 centimeters cubed of a 0.4 molar solution? Okay, since we want to work out mass, that means we're going to do the following. Mass equals moles times MR. The MR is 249.6. We've been given volume and concentration, and we can use this to work out the moles. Moles equals C times V over 1000. We're using 1000, remember, because the volume is in centimeters cubed. That gives us 0 0.4 times 50 over 1000 which is 0 0.02 moles. We can plug this into here, and the mass equals 4.99 grams, which is question D. And the answer is D. Question eight. If you want, you can pause the video and have a go. Okay, now this might be the first time you've seen the units PPM. PPM is another way of measuring concentration. If we have a concentration of 1 ppm, that means 1 gram of chemical is mixed or dissolved in 1 million grams of mixture. Now notice how this 1 ppm can be represented in different ways. For example, we could also say that we have 1 gram in 1000 kilograms because 1 million grams is the same as 1,000 kilograms. So whether we have 1 gram in a million grams 
or one gram in a thousand kilograms is still the same. Moving forward, we could also say the following. We could say a thousand milligrams of stuff in a thousand kilograms. Notice here that the ratio is still the same. One gram is the same as a thousand milligrams. So again, this is the same as saying one ppm. Or finally, we could also say that one ppm is one milligram in one kilogram. Notice the ratio is still the same in all four of these. It's still a one to a million ratio. But the point I'm trying to express here is that one ppm can be shown or expressed in different ways. And the last one is how they chose to express it in this particular question. Okay, we're going to use another example. Let's say we have this toothpaste. Here it says it has a 5000 ppm concentration of sodium fluoride. So what does that mean? Well, if we know that one ppm is one gram of chemical mixed in one million gram of mixture, then 5000 ppm is going to be 5000 grams of chemical in this case sodium fluoride, mixed in a million grams of stuff, or toothpaste in this case. And again, this could also be written in different ways. For example, we could say 5 grams in 1000 grams. So all I've done is divide the 5000 by 1000, and a million by 1000, but the proportion is the same. Or I could say 5000 milligrams in 1000 grams. Here I've just changed the 5 grams to 5,000. Or we could say 5 milligrams in 1 gram. In this case, I've divided both sides by 1,000. So 5,000 ppm can be written as 5 milligrams in 1 gram. And if you look at the toothpaste box, we can see it says 1 gram of toothpaste contains 5 milligrams of sodium fluoride, which is exactly what we said at the last line over there. Remember, it could also be expressed in various ways. However, they chose to express it like this in this particular item. So answering this question, we want to know the parts per million concentration of sodium fluoride in this particular toothpaste. So how do we calculate PPM? We have to know two masses. One mass is going to be the chemical, for example, sodium fluoride in this case. And the other mass is going to be the substance that it's mixed in, so toothpaste. Now to make it easier, you want to work them both out in grams. So have the mass of the chemical in grams and the mass of the substance it's mixed in in grams as well. And then we can do our changing later. So we have one gram of toothpaste. So we already know one. However, we haven't been given the mass of sodium fluoride. Instead, we have the moles. So we know that if we do moles times MR, in this case 42 for sodium fluoride, we're going to get a mass of the following. Okay, so now that I have my ratio of the two masses, how do I convert this into ppm? We know that ppm is parts per million. So let's turn this into a million grams by timesing it by 10 to the power of 6. Now if we times the right by 10 to the power of 6, we have to times the left also by 10 to the power of 6. And that gives us 1209.6. So that means we have 1209 grams of sodium fluoride in a million grams of toothpaste. Meaning that the concentration in ppm is going to be 1209.6. Or we can say 1210 the three sig fig. Okay, part B. Again, if you want, you can pause the video at this point. So we know that if the mass of sodium fluoride exceeds this limit per kilogram of body mass, then it can be dangerous. So how much sodium fluoride can a person who weighs 75 kilograms swallow without being intoxicated? Okay, so the maximum mass of sodium fluoride we're allowed is the following. Now this was per kilogram of body mass. However, since the person weighs 75 kilograms, 
that means we're going to times the left by 75 as well. So, so this is the maximum mass of sodium fluoride they could swallow. And if you times it by 1000, it gives us the following mass in milligrams. 2390. Okay, final part. This toothpaste that we have here has a sodium fluoride concentration of 2800 ppm. So, what mass of toothpaste could a person that weighs 75 kilograms swallow without reaching toxic levels? Now, we already said that they can have up to 2390 milligrams of sodium fluoride. So how much toothpaste does that mean? Well, we know that the concentration of toothpaste is 2,800 ppm. That means one kilogram of toothpaste contains 2,800 milligrams of sodium fluoride. However, this is much higher than the amount the person is allowed to have. So, if one kilogram of this toothpaste contains 2,800 milligrams of sodium fluoride, what mass of toothpaste would contain 2,390, which is the maximum mass of sodium fluoride we're allowed? So all we have to do is divide to turn it into 1 and then times it by 2,390. And whatever we do on the left, we do on the right, which gives us a mass of 0 0.854 kilograms. So around 850 grams of toothpaste is safe. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.